Hello, welcome to the Minnesota Coalition for the Homeless virtual series. I'm Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan, and I could not be more grateful for the opportunity to be here with all of you virtually today as we discuss this critical work. It means a lot to be with you today because this is an issue that is near and dear to my heart. I'm grateful to you for joining today's session. I'm also grateful for the work that you do each and every day. Many of you are direct service providers. Thank you. You also may be members of organizations leading in advocacy, members of faith communities, staff at state agencies, employees in local government, or maybe you're here because someone invited you and you said yes. However you got here, we are in this work together. Every person in Minnesota deserves a safe, affordable, and reliable place to call home. It's a foundation for success. But that's not yet the reality in our state. And until it is, we must do everything we can to get there. Minnesota has been in a statewide housing crisis since before the pandemic. From rising rates of homelessness to an increasing number of people who are cost burdened, housing instability is a reality for far too many of our neighbors. COVID-19 has only exacerbated and exposed this crisis. It did not create it. For centuries, decisions around land ownership and home ownership, where we invest and where we don't, have disproportionately impacted low-income families, Black, Brown, and Indigenous Minnesotans. That's why we must lead with equity. We must center and lift up the voices of those directly impacted, and we must seek and support culturally relevant and specific solutions. And that matters. When you're at your most vulnerable, it matters that you have a place where you can go, where your culture is understood, where it's respected, where your stories are honored, where you are seen as a relative and not just as someone who needs help. That's how we turn low barrier, short-term, safe place to stay into long-term connection and support in, into community. No one can solve homelessness on their own. That's why I'm grateful to work in partnership with cities, counties, tribes, nonprofits, philanthropy, and so many more folks to help our neighbors. It's also why the governor and I have made housing stability a central issue to our entire administration, because it's not just defined by one solution. Housing solves homelessness and shelter saves lives. We need both working together. Last week, I convened the Minnesota Interagency Council on Homelessness, a working group made up of 14 state commissioners to identify how we can work across agency, sector, level of government, and in deep partnership with community to further the state's response to homelessness and integrate the lessons learned from the COVID-19 crisis. Like so much else, the work to prevent and end homelessness has been profoundly altered over the past seven months by the coronavirus. Since the first legislation passed in response to the COVID-19 pandemic in March, the state has committed over $78 million of state and federal funds to respond to the needs of people experiencing homelessness statewide. These funds and coordinated efforts have helped organize and reinforce the statewide push to decompress emergency shelters, increase support for people living outdoors, organize testing events for people experiencing homelessness, contain outbreaks when they occur, and create over 2,300 additional safe indoor spaces. We know that COVID-19 has threatened many Minnesotans' financial security. Some are just a job loss or injury away from not being able to pay their rent. That's why the governor and I issued a moratorium on evictions, the beginning of this crisis, and have now allocated $100 million in CRF funding to provide housing assistance to Minnesotans behind on payments to help them stay in their homes. As weather gets colder in Minnesota, this work becomes even more urgent. We must work diligently and urgently with our partners in city, county, and tribal government, philanthropy, nonprofits, community volunteers, and beyond. And there are small victories. So far in 2020, 1,300 people experiencing homelessness have found permanent housing with help from city, county, state, and nonprofit partners. I'd like to end with an immense thank you to the shelter providers and street outreach workers who are doing the work across the state. I hope that the rest of today's session spark new ideas, new connections, 
a new urgency to come together to continue this mission to bring housing stability to all Minnesotans. The governor and I stand ready to continue this fight with all of you. Good luck and let's get to work.